Operation Azorian was the largest and most expensive covert mission in history. In the spring of 1968, the unusual behavior of the Soviet Pacific Fleet near Hawaii gave away their unfortunate circumstances. They had lost a submarine. The Americans were closely monitoring them and believed it to be the K-129, which sailed from Siberia in February. The plan to recover the remains of the submarine was soon set in motion, as the U.S. saw it as an opportunity to inspect the Soviet submarine, learn from its technology, and possibly even recover three ballistic nuclear missiles. An extraordinary opportunity. As part of the nuclear triad military force structure, submarines played a key role in the second half of the 20th century. According to Josh Dean, author of the book The Taking of K-129, submarines were, quote, the one thing you can hide from the enemy. On February 25, 1968, the Soviet submarine K-129 sailed from Siberia in a routine combat patrol. The U-boat carried 98 young sailors, most of whom were on their first mission, and also three ballistic nuclear missiles. But only a couple of weeks after departing, communication was lost with the crew, and the Soviet Union launched a search operation for their lost vessel. The Americans were closely monitoring the erratic behavior of their opponent's movements, and they immediately suspected that they were looking for the K-129. The U.S. then decided to carry out a mission as gargantuan as it was risky. They would find the submarine and steal it. The U.S. military and intelligence officers were tantalized by the invaluable codebooks they would undoubtedly find, as well as the unused nuclear warheads. In addition, they would gain significant knowledge on the Soviet sonars, making it easier to detect them. By the late 1960s, the two superpowers were at nuclear parity, and the U.S. was eager to obtain an edge over their adversaries. The Americans eventually pinpointed a possible location using hydrophones and the Air Force's nuclear seismic test centers. The triangulation of acoustic anomalies on March 8th, that probably originated from an explosion, then revealed the wreck's exact location, about 1,500 miles to the northwest of Pearl Harbor. USS Halibut was then secretly deployed in July in what was known as Operation Sand Dollar. Halibut was the only submarine equipped with deep submergent search equipment in the U.S. inventory, and it located the K-129 within three weeks using robotic remote-controlled cameras. The wreckage was estimated to be at a depth of over 16,000 feet, and Halibut spent several weeks taking thousands of detailed photographs. It would later receive a special classified presidential unit citation for the feat. Given that the Soviet submarine was in acceptable conditions, top American officials decided to go ahead with the plans to retrieve it. Defense Secretary Melvin Laird and National Security Advisor Henry Kissinger proposed a clandestine plan to recover it and laid out the technology and cryptographic materials that could be of use. President Richard Nixon accepted the proposal and the CIA was entrusted with the unprecedented task. No submarine had ever been recovered from beyond 300 feet. Project Azorian Project Azorian began in July of 1969. The operation was so secret that the word submarine was not allowed to be used, instead referring to it as target object. The CIA brainstormed several ideas on how to retrieve a 2,000-ton vessel from the bottom of the ocean. One of them involved generating enough gas on the ocean floor to buoy the submarine to the surface. But ultimately, a more conventional approach prevailed, to use a gigantic claw that would grip and lift the vessel. Global Marine, a company with extensive experience in creating powerful drilling ships, was hired to develop a vessel to carry out the operation. The ship needed to have a heavy pipe lifting system, a recovery claw, a docking leg, and a dynamic positioning system. It would also need to take into account the turbulent Pacific waters. However, a project of this magnitude needed a carefully thought out cover story. A public company would need to disclose its plans, so private funding was required. The solution came in the form of Howard Hughes, the eccentric billionaire who had already collaborated with the CIA before. Hughes lent his name to the construction of the highly specialized ship, an enormous vessel almost as big as a carrier. The 618-foot-long Hughes Glomar Explorer was built south of Philadelphia and launched in 1971. Though no official cost was ever disclosed, estimates put it between 75 and 300 million dollars. The secret mission had to be carried out in plain sight, as there was no way to hide the ship in the middle of the Pacific. The official story was that Hughes was undertaking seabed mining, an expensive but plausible feat 
that people were already talking about. The Glomar Explorer's public purpose was to harvest minerals in the ocean floor, such as the precious manganese nodules and other metals like copper. Hence, the Deep Ocean Mining Project was formed in a building near the Los Angeles airport. Many workers were hired, but to their disappointment, their job was to manage the covert commercial division. The matter was also taken to the United Nations, and experts were tasked to convince the authorities that the U.S. was operating within the law, even though they were exploiting international waters. A key component was the gargantuan claw and its 5100 meter steel pipe string, an unexplainable feature given the minuscule manganese nodules it was supposed to extract. Lockheed fabricated the device in secret within the largest submersible barge built, the HMB-1. People inside were told that Hughes was building a secret mining machine, and in case they were being monitored, mining equipment was left on the dock at all times to mislead intruders. The project was so secret that no pictures of the claw were ever taken. The device was equipped with powerful sonars and cameras to guide its lonely journey, and was nicknamed Clementine after an American folk song about a miner's daughter. Still, it was mostly referred to as the recovery vehicle. Hiding in plain sight. In 1973, the Glomar Explorer traveled around South America to reach the North Pacific because it was too wide to go through the Panama Canal. Then, by the spring of 1974, the HMB-1 submerged and met with the ship, and was positioned below the hollow moon pool where it delivered Clementine. That summer, the untested ship got the approval of President Nixon to sail towards the position of the Soviet vessel. The operation required millimetric precision. 285 individual pipe sections were lifted into the derrick and then jammed down towards the submarine while on a rocking ship. The platform was gimbaled, for it was deemed hazardous that the pipe string could snap under tension and hit the ship's hull. The Soviets kept harassing the ship and complicating the process, but they believed the mining story and eventually sailed away. The Glomar Explorer and Clementine continued to do as expected, with the claw gripping the wreckage and hauling it back to the surface. After hours of work, and with the submarine at 1,500 meters above the ocean floor, the claw fingers snapped under tension, and a portion of the submarine fell back to the bottom. Unfortunately, the lost portion contained the nuclear warheads. The recovered remains were then taken back to Hawaii. As a sign of respect for the deceased men inside, the Americans summoned a Russian defector to write a proper ceremony, which was then performed off Lahaina. The U.S. considered plans to return for the rest of the submarine, given that the cover story still provided protection. The claw would need to be redesigned with a more ductile steel, but the truth was leaked not long after. Aftermath An article in the LA Times portrayed an inaccurate version of the story about America trying to steal USSR submarines a month later. CIA Director William Colby then reached out to every newspaper and asked them to forget about the story, as the stakes were too high and the whole country was at risk. Almost every newspaper agreed, and Colby promised to let them know if there would be a leak so they could publish the story. And he kept his promise. In March of 1975, a radio reporter, Jack Anderson, blew the cover and accused the government of lying to the people, especially the taxpayers. Anderson stated that, quote, Navy experts have told us that the sunken sub contains no real secrets and that the project, therefore, is a waste of the taxpayers' money. Colby gave notice to all the papers, and they followed up on the story. Not long after, a Freedom of Information Act was filed for the disclosure of the entire project. What exactly happened between Washington and Moscow after the story was leaked is unclear. The U.S. couldn't acknowledge the truth publicly as to not embarrass the Soviets, and they opted for a carefully worded legal option, quote, The United States has issued no official comment on the matters related to the vessel Glomar Explorer. It is the policy of this government not to confirm, deny, or otherwise comment on alleged international activities. This is a practice followed by all governments, including the USSR. Regardless of press speculation, there will be no official position on this matter. After the demise of the Soviet Union in 1992, a copy of the burial ceremony video was handed to the Russians, along with the K-129 bell. Lockheed tried to use the Glomar Explorer as a prototype for a deep-sea mining program, but it was a particular machine that had little use besides its purpose, and it was not economically feasible. Ultimately, the vessel was converted into a drilling ship and was scrapped in 2015. Rumors continued to circulate throughout the years, leading to further conspiracy theories. Time magazine and the military audit project suggested 
that the raising of the Soviet submarine might have been a cover for another, more secretive endeavor, likely involving the installation of an underwater missile silo or surveillance systems. Still, there's no question that Project Azorian was the most ambitious known covert operation in history. Thank you for watching my video. Please click the like button and let us know your comments on this ambitious operation. And don't forget to subscribe to our channels for more historical anecdotes and incredible true stories.